Good morning, Natural Heart Family, Cardiac Longevitus. I am Dr. Lauren Latanza coming to you for day 11 of our Happy Heart Month. It is February 11th. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you're having a great start to your day. Um, I am very excited to bring you today's topic, arguably one of my favorite discussions when we talk about cardiometabolic health, and that is exercise. Um, I've got a lot of great information for you. Happy to save some time at the end to answer any questions that you might have, um, how to get started. I know that sometimes exercise can seem a little daunting if you haven't been all that active for maybe a little while. Um, so there's all kinds of great tips. Um, I'm going to talk about the best ways to exercise for improving your numbers, be it blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugar, all of your risk factors, um, really the research is just astounding in the amount that there is out there about improving all of these numbers to get to your 100-year um, heart. Um, good morning from AZ, Jeanette. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started, share my screen here for you. All right, again, we've got day 11. I'm going to be talking to you about why exercise is far better than drugs. Um, the studies just keep pouring out about why this is the way to go. You exercise rather than taking pharmaceuticals. So uh, I just really love this graphic. It just, I mean, in terms of talking about from um, through a paleo lens, how much more sedentary we've become even in the last 50 to 70 years um, I mean, really, it's just, you know, we used to be hunter gatherers, we used to have to work for our food. So there's a guy with a spear. And then there's a guy with a, you know, garden tool to make sure that we can get some agriculture going. Um, I think this might be like a jackhammer, maybe a moped, I'm not really sure what he's carrying there. But uh, with standing and now we spend a lot of time in modern day doing a lot of this. So lots of sitting in front of a computer, Poor, um, poor posture, which definitely join us tomorrow because we're going to be talking about chiropractic. So that's a whole another discussion to be had. But the sedentary lifestyle is just really, um, I mean, a risk factor all on its own. Um, there's been a lot of studies, increased risk of health outcomes, um, including weight gain, obesity, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and increased all-cause mortality just from sitting alone. Um, sitting is the new smoking. You've heard us say it before, and it stands to be true. Um, there's this idea of um, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So that's just not, you know, getting to the gym. I've done a post on this before, if you follow me on Instagram, um, but non-exercise non activity, meaning, so you're, instead of sitting, you're standing. Instead of um, taking the elevator, you take the stairs. Instead of, um, you know, just sitting on your couch, you're cleaning. So all of these things that are not programmed to be thought of necessarily as physical activity, as exercise, um, but they are still making you physically active. So the um, increase in calories burned just from sitting to standing alone can make such a change in just one week. So, you know, push the chair to the side. Um, make sure that you're standing up regularly from your desk instead of, you know, if you're having to take a call every single day for an hour rather than sitting, if it can be done from a phone, you know, take a walk around your neighborhood. Um, I know that, you know, while I was studying all of, over the years, I would walk the um, large um, parking lot that we had. So find somewhere, take some laps, get standing, get moving. Um Sitting is the new smoking, so get active. Um, so this is just um, one study that I thought was uh, really, really great. So this one um, saying back to basics with active lifestyles. So this study shows that exercise, like my title of my slideshow entails, exercise is more effective than metformin, which is the number one um, type 2 diabetes drug out there, um, been around a long time. But exercise is more effective than metformin in reducing cardiovascular risk in older adults with type 2 diabetes. So I want to kind of expand on the idea of this study and how they did this. It was a really good study. 
um, there was 284 participants that were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Um, and they were early on in type 2 diabetes, meaning that their hemoglobin A1C, um, which is your essentially your uh, three-month average of your blood sugar, we like an A1C under 5.6 typically. Um, hovering around five is great, uh, really optimal. Um, but these patients were um, 7.5 on an A1C or less. So um, kind of early stage uh, type two diabetics. And these participants, 284, were set into one of three groups. So the first was exercise only. The second was metformin, 850 milligrams twice a day. And then the third group was exercise and metformin. Um, and after 24 months, the exercise group had decreased body mass, decreased their waist circumference, so meaning just around their abdomen, which is its own individual risk factor. So decrease their waist circumference, decrease their BMI, decrease systolic and diastolic blood pressures by 11%. Triglycerides were down 21% and blood sugar was down 12%. Um, just from exercise alone. On the other hand, the metformin group, so only pharmaceutical group, had increased their waist circumference, increased waist to hip ratio, so meaning they got wider, they didn't get any taller, they got wider, um, and they had increased systolic blood pressure. Um, so this study concluded that exercise was the most effective therapy in de decreasing the cardiovascular risk in patients with early type 2 diabetes. Um, so it, first of all, find out what your A1C is. You don't have to be an um, early stage diabetic. You don't have to be diagnosed with anything to gain the benefits of exercise. Um, and the exercise consisted of three training sessions a week. Um, so they were doing, let's see, uh, I think about an hour per session. So I'll get into the best ways of exercise. I'm happy to answer any questions about this study. I thought it was great. I could go on about this for 20 minutes alone. But anyway, really great study. Um, so if you're interested at all, look back into this. It was done in 2018. Uh, before I go any further, the word of the day is purpose. So I mentioned um, NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Um, I would encourage you to move with purpose. So don't just stand around. Find time, make time in your schedule. If you have to literally write it in there to make it happen, I know that I do. Um, move with purpose. So it doesn't have to be hours every day. It doesn't have to be 5.30 in the morning. But if you can have an intent on making some time to move every single day, um, get it done. All right. So what kind of exercise has been found to be best? Like I said, there have been lots of studies um, on exercise and cardiovascular disease and um, other metabolic diseases. So again, diabetes, um, you name it. There's been studies on how exercise can improve that and comparing that to drugs. Time and time again, exercise has been shown to be best. Um, really, so high intensity interval training. Um, so this one was done to show the blood pressure lowering effects of exercise training. Um, and so they looked at what kind of training was best. So HIT, which is high intensity interval training, rather than moderate intensity um, conditioning training. So rather than, you know, getting on a treadmill and walking at a steady state for, you know, maybe 30 minutes, the benefit was far above, um, much, much higher improved on just this one metric alone. So it, when looking at blood pressure, the um, best way to get improvement in blood pressure was high intensity interval training. So a common um, study or a common studied way of doing high intensity interval training was this four by four protocol. Um, so this was looking, this was a review. So this was published in the World Journal of Cardiology in 2019. And this was a review looking at all these different studies that compare which um, forms of high intensity interval training um, can be best for um, cardiac diseases. So this four by four was the most studied, but you can really make it your own. So um, we've got the four by four would be four minutes of high like burst activity. So you really get your heart pumping and then you let it slow down um, and then you get another four minutes. So four minutes, four, 
four rounds. Um, and I'll talk about some other well-studied, um, kind of easy to implement um, ways to do HIIT training. So ultimately, this is 16 minutes of activity. Everybody's got 16 minutes where they could find that into their in their day. Um, so again, this um, review looked at how to best lower blood pressure. Um, the most studies on this were done at a four by four um, breakdown in the HIIT training. Um, so again, you can kind of make it your own. So this is sort of an easy formula to follow. Um, so choose four or more movements. Um, I would like to suggest upper and lower body, um, especially if you're only doing this maybe three days a week, then you want to do maybe full body. So upper and lower body. Um, if you are able to do this every day, maybe five days a week, then maybe split it up. Maybe you do all upper body on Monday and then Tuesday you do all lower body. And then Wednesday you do kind of some core and conditioning, really focusing on cardiovascular, making um, your uh, heart rate get up there. Um, but if you're doing large muscle groups, if you're really focusing on large muscle groups, even if you're moving slow and you're really burning those large muscle groups, so your quads, um, your hamstrings, your glutes, all of these larger muscle groups, you will get huffing and puffing and it will feel like cardio. You don't have to do sprints and, you know, or hike a mountain to best get your heart rate up. So choosing four or more movements, um, and I suggest if you just do an internet search, hit exercises, there are a number of infographics. I'll try to throw some of my favorites out there, but I'm going to play this 13 second little clip that I um, have posted on my Instagram last week um, after I get through this. So choosing four or more movements, upper and or lower body, um, set your rep range. So how many, so depending on your exercise, how many reps of that are you going to do between eight and 15, depending on how challenging it is. Um, and then choose how many sets you do. So three rounds, four rounds, five rounds is uh, pretty common. Uh, and then taking 30 to 90 second breaks in between. So it's high intensity interval, meaning that you get your heart, heart rate really up high and then you like, let it come down and then you kind of peak it again and then you let it come down between sets. Um, so here's kind of a goofy little video of me. Uh, I rode my bike over to my favorite place to it's just a nice view, obviously. So um, I chose step ups, switching legs, and then some just air squats, push ups. They don't have to be on the ground. I wasn't going to get my hands just on the dirt. Um, and then some tricep dips and toe taps. So those were my chosen exercises that day. Um, I did, I think, like 15 um, reps of each. And then I did that four times through. So I did five exercises. 15 reps, and I did that uh, four or five times through, I can't remember, but taking that, you know, minute between um, each set. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need to get to a gym. You don't have to pay a bunch of money. This was ultimately free. Yeah, all I needed was a park bench. Um, we don't need to keep playing that. Okay, so ways that you can um, get this uh kind of started now. So there's so many Instagram accounts. These are just like two of my favorite that I know are always posting different hit um, circuits. Um, some of them require activity or some of them require like a gym um, membership, maybe some weights. So you don't need to have a gym as long as you kind of have something heavy to lift at home. Um, a fit on app. So it's my favorite app. It's free. You can download it. There are I mean, literally thousands of there's hit classes. There is just, um, I mean, there's yoga, there's all kinds of stuff in there, but if you just don't know where to get started with hit, um, I would suggest downloading the fit on app. There's classes for any amount of length that you have available. So there's five minute classes, there's hour long classes, um, all, I mean, they are really great about providing modification. So if you can rep out, you know, 15 push ups no problem on the ground, but then they say, okay, if you can't do this, then let's modify it. Um, and like I was doing them on the park bench. So you can do on your kitchen island or on your bathroom sink. Um, so really everything can be modified to your, where you're at. Everything needs to be able to meet you where you're at. Um, what I use is an, another free app. Free apps are a great way to go. There's an app for just about everything. Um, this interval timer app, there is a lot of them out there. If you just search the app store um, intervals or interval timer or hit timer. Um, you can set, you know, 
three minutes on, uh, 60 seconds off. Three minutes on, 60 seconds off. So you have this built in and it reminds you, okay, stop. You got your heart rate up. So working hard during that three to five or 10 minutes, um, however you set up your activity, um, and then shut it off. So if you're not doing the rep range count um, like I was doing in that video, then you can just set it as um, as a timer. Um, all free, um, this Danielle Pacente at Jeremy Scott Fitness. I actually um, recently recorded a podcast with him. So that'll be coming out. And I talked to him about ways to get started. I know that sometimes it can seem daunting, but don't let it intimidate you. Um, there's a lot of you know, I don't know that it's like necessarily gym shaming or whatever. You don't have to be a pro. All you have to do is move. That's the goal is just get moving. Um, so that was the end of my slideshow. I could go on about this topic for hours and hours. So I'm going to get to some of the comments. So chime in. Um, Jeanette's been doing hit for about a month, three to four days a week. Love it. I wonder how you're feeling. Let us know. Share your um, improvements. Share your success stories with us. Um, if it's been really hard, then you can share that too. Share the trials and um, how it's been going both good and bad. We got a Facebook user saying I tried Dr. Mercola's nitric oxide dump. That's awesome um, for a few years and my knees hate it. So I stopped again, mo look for modifications. So I was going to actually um, post a link to this nitric oxide dump. It's a four minute um, circuit essentially, but, um, working these large muscle groups and dumping nitric oxide into your bloodstream. So you get this large blood pressure, um, release opening and dilating your blood vessels. So if we're talking about improving, uh, blood pressure, that's an excellent way to do it. So, um, Dr. Mercola and, um, Dr. Zach Bush, I believe were the ones that uh, got that going. So if you just do a quick search for a nitric oxide dump exercise, um, but again, if that, if your knees were bothering you, modify that. So I know that the squats was something in there. Make sure that you're doing um, correct form on those. So make sure you're sitting back, keeping your chest up um, and that your knees are going out and they're not kind of buckling in. So there's a lot of structural things, even in simple exercise. Um, so just make sure that when you get started on some of these things, you shouldn't, I mean, you should have some muscle soreness, but overall you shouldn't be in pain. Um, but yeah, I love the nitric oxide dump. Uh, I do hit three times a week for 20 minutes, oil pulling at the same time. Love that multitasking. Again, you can, I always suggest like um, just doing things while you're already doing something else. So if you're doing the dishes, do some calf raises. Um, if you're waiting for water to boil, do some pushups, not right in front of the stove, but move to the side and, and another area. Um, to, so just get moving. Let's see, I've been doing chair exercises for seniors. Chair exercises are so great. And you can see like even when I'm using the um, uh, the picnic bench, I'm using that as a monitor of how low to go on my squat because some it's pretty often that if you go lower than that, you get your knees buckling, you lose your structure, you lose the proper form. Um, so definitely chair exercises for seniors, chair exercises for anybody, really, really great. Um, so get started, get moving. Um, I've got a blog post that we're going to share um, and then, you know, we've got an affiliate that I wanted to mention on, um, some organic clothing. I talked last, um, earlier this week about, um, your skin and being able to absorb all kinds of nasty stuff, um, both, you know, be it good or bad. So be sure what you're putting on, um, while you're sweating, your, um, skin, your pores are open. So getting some organic, um, exercise clothing will be a really, really great idea to make sure you're not absorbing, um, any of these chemicals, if it's inorganic, could be covered in glyphosate or any other pesticide, herbicide. So make sure you're using good, clean products there, staying hydrated. Um, I mean, just really all of the foundational things that we've been talking about for the last 11 days. Uh, I hope this has been a helpful conversation for all of you. Uh, I hope it motivates you all to get moving. Um, reach out with any questions. Again, this is my favorite topic. Um, there's just so much benefit that can come from moving. I know that I, uh, exercise every morning before getting into the office. It keeps you sharp brain derived neurotropic factor, um, is something that just is triggered from moving your, moving your body, um, and keeps you sharp, gets you going, makes you feel better. gets that metabolism going. Um, hope this was helpful for you. I encourage you to keep following along. Share this video if you liked it. Um, we've got, again, tomorrow we're going to be talking about chiropractic adjustment and why your heart 
needs you to be properly aligned. So join us tomorrow. Um, again, word of the day was purpose, movement with purpose. Hope you all have a great day today and have a wonderful weekend ahead. Thank you.